Good afternoon. Welcome to our first pair session uh, at the Healthcare and Life Sciences track at TC17. My name is Andy Day. I'm the Senior Director for Healthcare and Life Sciences at Tableau. Uh, as one of the leaders who helped establish the Healthcare and Life Sciences business unit at Tableau. And again, it is with great pride I get to introduce, I have the privilege of introducing our, our next speakers from Humana. That needs no introduction. It. It's uh, walking around. We have Douglas Del Vecchio. Doug Del Vecchio. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah That's been impressive. To, been to Italy a couple of times. No. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Del Vecchio is the director of digital analytics and insights and leads a large team of BI analysts to deliver actionable insights to their execs uh, stakeholders. Uh, Jim is a member of his team. His claim to fame has been turning a pharmacy website into a billion dollar e-commerce uh, you know, department within Humana. And since then, he's uh, moved on to greener pastures and is delivering- My team. <laughs> <laughs> and is part of this team delivering uh, you know, insights uh, to their execs around all of Humana's digital programs. So with that brief introduction, Doug Del Vecchio and Jim Gregory, please take so it away. If, thank you, Andy, appreciate that. So if you think that this session is about turkey sex, then you're probably in the wrong session. Um, so my name is Doug Del Vecchio. I head up the digital analytics group. Um, I've been with Humana for about two and a half years. Um, I have been in the BI space for probably about t almost 20, which is kind of crazy to me in some ways. Um, I grinded my teeth on tools like SQL Server and Brio, and for those that don't know Brio, I'm probably dating myself a little bit because uh, Tableau is, is, Tableau is Tableau, right? Um, some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today is uh, uh, um, automation, uh, eliminating manual reporting, customer centricity, and uh, a reporting perspective uh, from Jim. So, Jim? Hey, everyone. I'm Jim Gregory, and uh, as Doug said, I'll be giving you all the reporting perspective. So Doug's kind of like coming in as the big boss man, is making all these big decisions and whatnot, and I'm coming in and giving you all the kind of like the uh, data jockey and the dashboard wizard uh, perspective of Jim all this. Jim was king of data wrangling, by the way. I was. Uh, data, I, they <laughs> called me the data czar, and then I moved on to Doug's team, and he's like, you gotta stop that. You just gotta stop it. <laughs> so uh, I've been with Humana for six years. Um, I've been using uh, Tableau for four years. Um, I've had fundamentals training. I've had uh, advanced training. I had desktop three training. And uh, I'm going to go off and do my exam tomorrow and finally get some certifications on my belt. I just want to say thank you to Laura, my trainer over here. She got it all started. So if you want to know how to be uh, awesome in your visualizations, a just Jedi, talk to Laura. A Jedi, a Jedi master, right? Yes. Well, you're Darth, you're Darth, Darth Doug yes, most of you. the time. So <laughs> um, what are we going to talk about? So we've got uh, a broad base of topics to talk about today. Uh, our main topics we're going to talk about, really, you know, we have, have all of our stuff here listed out, but there's kind of hinges on three things. Uh, where we were uh, before we started using Tableau, uh, what happened when we started using Tableau, uh, and then how did we solve the new problems that Tableau created for our team? Um, you all may, you know, look at our story uh, and find inspirations all throughout the storyline. Um, but I, I would suspect that you all are going to be at various places uh, on, on our stories. It's this taken us about two years to, to uh, accomplish the things that, we're, that we accomplished. So a brief introduction to something that you all should seem very familiar with, this member centricity. It's been around for as long as I've been working. And Doug's going to talk a little bit about it from the humanist perspective, and I'm going to come in, and then we're going to jump into some human values yeah. and move on. I would, I would say that the member being at the center of everything is nothing new to an organization. Uh, the way that we think about, uh, when I say I think about, it's me, I think about the client interactions that we have and how we can take that information, bridge it into the members that we have and create a fr frictionless experience. And that's the focus of how we're thinking about our members. It's not just, oh, our members are in the center and that's how we think about it. It's really taking the data building out that information, bridging the insights, and that's critical in how we bridge that frictionless environment in tomorrow world, basically, for, our, for a, a very complex 
you know, healthcare, as many of you probably know, is not simple. So. And out of curiosity, I mean, how many people are, work in healthcare? Ooh, we got a all lot of you guys. Yeah. So you guys are all like legal esquires at this point too, in addition to that. Now I want to drill down. How many people are from Humana? Oh yeah, representing. Thanks for showing up, guys. Um, so the key word here is enable. Like, you know, we are kind of a shared services team. We, uh, we provide analytics to uh, people who are building the apps, who are building the websites, the product managers. They rely on, on us to query these databases and supply the metrics. And it's enabling them to go as high up to the executive level to all the way down to the member level if they so wish. That's what our, what our purpose really is. So this is also something that should seem very familiar to you all. Uh, everyone's got values. But whenever you view your brand values through the lens of data, they transform. They transform into measurable uh, actions that you can take. And so you, know, you can see on the left, uh, these are our Humana's value. Uh, in, in a nutshell, we, our purpose is to inspire um, lifelong health and well-being uh, of our members. Uh, when you apply analytics, when you apply digital uh, insights to our values, uh, you get uh, the outcome of, of these things here on the right. You, you all have all, you're all, all your organizations have these values, and uh, you can all, I would all encourage you all to view uh, your values, take them seriously, and view them through the lens of, of, of data, and figure out how you can measure progress towards those, towards those values. When we take these values and apply them to our own team, really what we're trying to do is enable our analysts, empower our stakeholders, and bridge efficiency into everything that we do. Um, it's critical to how uh, we work with our business stakeholders. It's critical that the automations allow us to then uh, drive into deeper insights, like for what Jim will show you. And so, for this next, next topic, I'm gonna take a step back in time. Six years ago, when I first came to Humana as a you know, fresh green data jockey, uh, all of our reporting, uh, and I, I bet the Humana people in the audience can, can uh, attest to this as well, all of our reporting relied on large Excel files for the most part. Uh, it was very manually intensive. I was literally uh, chicken pecking numbers from an SSRS report, putting it in Excel files so I could format it the way that I wanted to, consume it the way that I wanted to. And driving me crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, he inherited the mess that I created and then, and then helped me uh, organize it a little better. Um, our reporting was one-sided. There was no interactivity. And then, as you all guess, Tableau came into our life. And then whoo, our minds were Tableau. It, to me, it was, like, it was like we created a time machine. Like suddenly, all that time, all that time that we spent wrangling data, you know, being de data jockeys, whatever, uh, it was gone, poof, gone. That's all that time, extra time that I had. I could be like, I, what took me a month now took a day. Uh, you know, what am I gonna do with all this time? I'm gonna be lazy. No, I'm not gonna be lazy. Um, and then Doug here is gonna, gonna uh, fill us into like actually what happened when we got all this newfound time, the fundamental shift in how we handled and processed as, as a team. And that's just it, it was a paradigm shift of what we, we really encountered. Uh, a cultural change in our team. We moved away from just doing web analytics to digital intelligence. That's the direction of our organization. It's a direction that I think every organization should really be encouraged to think about. Um, moving away from turnstile reporting. So volume's important, but it's not the end-all, be-all game, right? We need to understand our customers and how we drive those successes and experiences to then in turn drive to what it is we want to um, help them with, create that frictionless environment for them, right? Um, you know, I, I often say that I want my analysts to become more uh, digital Sherpas, that I want them to be able to travel up the, the mountain and show the people how to get to the insights. Uh, we want to move them into being trusted advisors uh, and really automating everything we do. So from my perspective, the team, if we're doing manual reporting, which we've eliminated at this point now, but that's been a huge drive. Um, the other factor is democratizing all of the information that we have. So being able to empower the people that we distribute that information to, to make them allow them to find their own discovery so we're not always sitting there churning for them and delivering reports, but we're actually doing a lot more than that. We're actually delivering deeper levels of insights around the customers, and that's the critical path that we're, we're focused on as, as, at Humana. 
And so that is the shift that we're talking about. And I have, believe it or not, come up with a fabulous visualization to, uh, <laughs> to <laughs> demonstrate what the shift actually looks like. You know, uh, we have on the, the y-axis, we, we have results. On the x-axis, axis, we have effort. And you guessed it, it all starts with the day that Tableau comes into our life. Uh, great day, right? Woohoo! Great. I got our time machine. You know, I can produce these awesome reports. Wonderful. Data to the people, you know. Business partners are happy, like, oh my gosh, where has this been? We've never seen reports like this before. I can, you mean I can click this button and filter this and then like, mine's Tableau, right? So, uh, and, and of course, we as uh, passionate uh, reporting analysts are happy to oblige the, uh, the, uh, the additional report request. Yeah, sure. Well, so happy to pull together this another another awesome dashboard for you. Well, we can create another awesome dashboard for you, and uh, you know the the story goes on and on. But eventually, what's going to happen is you're going to hit kind of a wall uh, where you can no longer rely on the data that you have access to uh, anymore, and uh, you'll have to either go to your IT team or you'll have to go to uh, someplace else to, to, to bring in this data. And um, for whatever reason that is, uh, your business partner is not going to really understand why. And you can explain it to them, and it's going to go over their head, um, because they don't really care. They just want the data. They want the report at the same rate, of, uh, the same frequency you were delivering a report before. They want it, and that's, they, don't, they, don't under, they don't want things to slow down. And so, that's where our fearless leader, Doug, comes in and, uh, and basically uh, tells the team, we gotta fix this. And our team together put our heads together and we came, we came up with the idea of implementing the Hadoop and Splunk in environment to give us the Hadoop, Cloudera Hadoop gives us the power to, to weld large sets of data, large volumes of data together uh, in, a, in a much faster way than IT could ever do. And Splunk gives us that, the, the nimbleness and the ability to drill down to that needle in the haystack if we need to, and to create those ad hoc reports. Um, both tools have their limitations, but working together, it creates a wonderful data environment pair that allows us to uh, handle the ever-increasing complexity of our reports and give us the capabilities to organize really complex data and ultimately go towards uh, achieving, uh, creating an internal self-service environment that, that looks and behaves fundamentally like a website. We're creating reports, dashboards, we're inter, we'll get to it in a second, we're, we're weaving together our dashboards in, in sort of a navigable experience that's very similar to, to a website-like experience. So, you know, in order for us to handle the placemat that we have there and bringing all the web analytic data into a, a, a data source, as I mentioned before, the digital intelligence component of that, really, we had to have a data environment. Um, we had explored EDW uh, in Humana. Um, there was some level of web data that was going in there. It hadn't been really pressurized in any such way. Um, it was monolithic, siloed, latency, I mean, just all kinds of latency issues with it as well. Um, and so from my perspective, it was Hadoop seemed to be the right answer for us in terms of addressing the ability to scale. So as we're bringing all these digital elements together, uh, you know, we really need to be able to cajole them together. Uh, it allows us to create a consistent quality environment. So when you think about web data coming out and being able to match data that comes out from the front end SaaS portal of that, and then bringing it into Hadoop, we're matching up those quality elements that are there. We're creating governance too. So in a previous lifespan, it would go into EDW and it would just disappear, right? In Hadoop, I'm now able to compartmentalize all of that information and box it up and then distribute it to other partners. They could still use it, but I'm able to make sure that that data is in a right state, right? Um, the other thing that Hadoop offered for us was the ability to create real-time feeds. Real-time feeds and such that, you know, so for example, I get a activity on the web, I want to then take that service and distribute it to the call center. I now have the ability to do that. And other services that we're now talking with other groups on as well. So to me, going down the Hadoop space was a no-brainer. Um, the other piece about that is that Splunk offered us the opportunity to uh, dive into the web logs 
It allowed us to understand the pathing that people were doing in much greater detail than we had in our, even our own web analytic tools. Um, that to me was a, another huge win for us. It actually allowed us to do auditing on the website as well, pages that are down, content that's down, uh, anything that breaks. We now have a tool that allows us to see that type of information. So that to me is critical. Um, so as I mentioned before, digital intelligence, all these different things coming together, right? In order for us to do that, we needed Hadoop because the placemat size is going to get vastly large. It's going to have a lot of different activities into it. If I'm spinning up real-time services, I need to have this connectivity. And in addition to that, I need to have the connectivity in relation to the member. So when you think about that member, I need to have all that connectivity so that they can understand, we can understand what's driving their needs. What's their customer journey look like? Uh, where is that friction that they're having in terms of the operations? And it's not just digital anymore. We're talking about calls. We're talking about uh, SMS. Any, uh, there's a lot of different characteristics of what our customers do that we need to understand so we can drive out, the, once again, the efficiency, the quality, and the experience that they have. And all this comes together and as a team effort, and as a team, we eliminated Excel entirely from our life. And this is where you guys throw roses on the stage, and like you've nominated <laughs> us for a Nobel Peace Prize, uh, or at least, um, and it was really exciting for us because we didn't have to come in the office every day and see this look from Doug's face. This is Doug Jr. This is my wingman. <laughs> he, when every time we use, we said we were using. Uh, well, I had a. I will admit, I had like an Excel sheet that was 500 columns long, uh, and uh, when that I that was told, my face most of the time when he showed it mm -hmm. to me. He was uh, so great, <laughs> so happy that you spent all this time for three years working on this. Um, Doug helped me see the light and see a way forward as a reporting analyst uh, to eliminate the need, the need to have a 500 column uh, Excel sheet report, and all of this stuff adds up. Uh, we estimate that each reporting analyst on our team saves 800 hours a year in, in, in data wrangling time. So again, like, what am I going to do with all this free time? Well, I can go after f other important things. Deeper insights. In internal self-service. Again, creating, enabling our business partners, giving our, our business partners the ability to drill up or down. Uh, to whatever granular uh, level of detail that they want to see in their reporting, that's internal self-service. Saves us time, saves the whole enterprise time, uh, not spent tapping Jim on the shoulder, saying, hey, Jim, um, how, did, how did reports, how, how did the orders from this week compare to like this week last year? You know, stuff like that, if you create an internal self-service dashboard to let them answer those questions themselves, saves you a ton of time, because as you all probably know, uh, as in, from, especially if you all are reporting analysts, you break your concentration, it's like you have to take a whole hour just to kind of get warmed back up again. And of course, the digital insights are where the true value is, and asking those hard-hitting questions about how is this impacting our bottom line? How is this driving better health outcomes for our members? That's where the true gold, uh, golden metrics are for, for, our, uh, for our business. And having 800 hours a year back uh, lets us go after those things. And it all, again, it all adds up. Um, in three to five years, we have 1.2 to $2 million in resource allocation. That's, that's time awesome. that we can, that's 1.2 to $2 million that we invest into finding better insights, into going, at, in, into creating, you know, better, uh, better quality of data, uh, fixing the, the bigger problems that keep reoccurring, but we just don't have time to go after. The, it's, it's, it's tremendous, it's huge. I would also add, though, that uh, to underscore that our individual s internal stakeholders now are able to do the, the analysis themselves. They're able to do the discovery, um, which I think is also really important in this slide, because you can't really, you can measure it to a degree, but the fact that Jim doesn't need to be the intermediary all the time, um, that we're empowering people to be able to access that information at any time in a centralized way, is it's been a huge win for our organization. For lack of better words, it's awesome. <laughs> so, all right, so we're telling you all about this great conceptual stuff, but we've, we're not telling you also the, the human aspect of it. Like, what about the people who are using these tools? What about the people that are consuming the, this information that we're creating, these dashboards? How do we figure out that problem? Because as, as you can know, about 20, there are about 20 people on our team um, 
things can get kind of messy and complex when you're dealing with, especially with three really complex tools, Tableau, Hadoop, Splunk. They all have their own separate kind of languages that they use. Uh, and that's a lot to expect uh, 20 people to learn all at once. And then not to mention all of our business partners that we serve. How do we handle that, handle these things in the shift? And we solve that by really uh, acknowledging that there are two sides to what we do as uh, reporting reporting data people. As data people, there's two sides to what we do, to what you all do probably as well. And this is really taking a page out of web, uh, web development, realizing that there's the front end stuff, the front end, the stuff that the members see, the pretty stuff, the visualization stuff, the stuff that I do really well and swim very well in. And then there is the back end component. Um, the art, science. I'm artsy fartsy, and he's more scientific. Um, and, and so our team's kind of split up that way as well. Um, and so acknowledging that there are two sides to, to what we do allows us to standardize those two sides of, of, of what we do. And, and it's, it's creating those standards that was key to our success because without, the, without standardization, people just go off and do their own things. And there's significant risk with people just going off and doing their own things and coming up with their own queries and coming up with their own, their, their own uh, standard dashboards at, creates inconsistencies with like the look and feel and all that stuff. It creates, it's, it's not good. So you need to standardize that kind of stuff. And also the feedback from the visualization folks in the, in the art piece to say, hey, I don't know how to get that. Can you figure that part out for us? And then us creating the, the agile stories with our IT partners to help develop out the data infrastructure, which helps support the visualizations. And our solutions are not rocket surgery. These, the, 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 best, the best solution we, uh, I don't, it's rocket science is what I meant to say, right? But, um, <laughs> but it's, um, they're, they're really simple. It's going, it's going back to the basics. All of us are so, we get so caught up in our day-to-day -day lives and we kind of, kind of forget these fundamental things that we're actually dealing with humans. And, and like, you know, there's some things that we have to like, people, there's kind of like people skills that we need to f figure out. And like, for example, creating workshops for, for our teams. Every week we have, like, we spend one to two hours just kind of talking through problems that we've, we face using Tableau. You know, I know if you, any people who use Tableau um, uh, for very long will realize, will hit a, um, a moment where you spend probably an entire day trying to figure out one thing that's driving you nuts. Now, if you uh, can have, have a workshop and say, hey guys, I spent like eight hours trying to figure out this one thing, I figured it out, you just, do this and do that and bada bing, bada boom. It's the second set of eyes over the shoulder that um, we're also a virtual team. So we have folks in Louisville. We also have folks like Jim in Nashville. How do you make sure that you can share out and collaborate, right? And so the team has, you know, we do WebExes now, as Jim mentioned, but the challenge is making sure that we're not losing that information. Uh, that, that's why we're creating these field guides. We're creating the wikis because we, as you develop, we want to be able to, the next person that comes on to the team, we want to make sure that they're able to in, uh, empower and use that information as well. Doug asked me, Jim, what happens one day if you just go out and get hit by a bus? What are we going to do? Right. And I was like, well, that's a good question. Uh, and so <laughs> well, to give you a little bit more of the history, Jim was only focused on this one line of business, right, that he had been supporting for a number of years. And then Jim was going out on vacation. So I said, well, Jim. It was my wedding. What, what am I going to do here? OK, we need to start you know, bridging other folks into your world so that way they can understand it. If some request does come through, we need to make a change to a dashboard. We have that types of information as well. So have workshops. Create, take the time to do these, create these dictionaries. They're really, really important, and they're really, really simple to do. It just takes time. So the other component of this is how our users consume our data, how our business partners consume our data. And uh, it really hinges on creating a, a centralized navigational experience. And so uh, we built a, a dashboard on the server side that organizes all the dashboards that our reporting analysts produce. And so instead of, you know, every, we have like 10 analysts on, on the team who create 10 dashboards, there's 100 dashboards, instead of 100 different links out there just floating around in their own silos, the table of contents centralize it and gives our users, our business partners, the ability to explore and go back to where the place that they were exploring from. We, we needed to make sure that uh, we understood the user experience. So when you start getting into this, folks, when they navigate, it has to be lucid. It has to be in such a way, a format that they can consume. Uh, 
we had to have a centralized way of doing that because if we just threw them at different dashboards, it just feels, uh, you know, uh, not connected at all. Mm -hmm. um, and that was another reason why we, div we put this together, basically. So the key is create a centralized navigational experience with the dashboards you have. Don't just create up 100 different links and just let them float out there in, in cyberspace and then they get dust and people forget about them. Because there might be insights that, cross-functional insights that one team never knew about how, you know, kind of the left hand not talking to the right hand kind of thing. Um, having that centralized navigational experience lets the left hand talk to the right hand. Yep. Doug, I think you want to talk a little bit about the, the consistent look and feel. So the team, I, we, we had kind of been moving along with building out different dashboards, and I, and I didn't want to be prescriptive about how we did it. And so we got to a state where I said, OK, it's time for us to start looking the same way. And it's not to say that everything has to be exactly the same. And that was some of the struggle mm -hmm. in our team was that some folks were like, well, I don't want it to look like that. And, and I said, listen, we're talking about the, a general uh, you know, consistent look and feel, a, a way that somebody can email us if they have a question, uh, how they get back to the main page. We have to consider these things like a user experience. This is a web page as it starts to turn out, right? How they get back to other areas and other dashboards. And so, you know, we had driven this, and Jim helped out a lot with this. Um, kudos to Jim. Uh, because it was just really important. And so now our organization's coming back to us and saying, this is really simple. I love the way that this look and feel is. It, you know, th that's been the feedback. We've surveyed the teams there as well to understand that. It accomplishes two things. Uh, one, uh, for a reporting analyst, you spend, when you have a, 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 a standardized template that you use, you eliminate all that time reformatting and create your own format. It could take hours, could take days to create a, a, an awesome format for your dashboard. So it eliminates that time spent creating your own format when you just take the template on our SharePoint or um, on our Hatch or whatever, you know, whatever internal self, what internal internet Social. thing you use. Uh, pull it down and just um, copy and paste, literally copy and paste. Tableau makes it that easy. Uh, and then the second thing is the consistent look and feel makes it recognizable to our business partners. So they always know what to expect and where to go and how to navigate. And it looks familiar. It feels like home. Oh. So um, that's the two things that it accomplishes. So uh, we've been talking a lot conceptually how we have, uh, you know, what we've been doing. Now, I'm going to have to show you, I, mean, I get to show you uh, <laughs> what, I've, what I've been creating. This is kind of like, I'm so excited. Um, uh, unfortunately, we're not, I don't, we don't have enough time to get down uh, into the details of the functionality of these things. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show you some samples of what, uh, of what our, our dashboards look like when it all comes together in perfect harmony. Um, so. This is our My Humana app dashboard. The intended user for this is, of course, the app development team. Um, they want to know um, KPI performance. Uh, and most importantly, they want to know it across the span of, uh, span of time. And they want the ability to move forward and backward in, in time uh, to compare and contrast. Because again, um, once upon a time, it used to be like, hey, Jim, how does this week compare to this week last year? And then I'd have to go get that answer. Uh, those days are gone because now uh, Tableau gives us the ability, uh, gives our users the ability to move back and forth on a timeline. Oh man, I forgot. My computer needs to be replaced, so it takes a little while. Just spill some coffee on it. Oh, that, I'm sure that'll help a lot. <laughs> oh, actually, it would because I would get a new computer. Um, well, oh, there we go. So yeah, uh, you've all, um, if, if for the Tableau wizards out, out in the audience, you've all seen this before. Um, it's just a, a date parameter filter. Uh, but it changes your data as you move back and forth. And so uh, you can see the KPI percent change. Um, these are all, and these are all discussions that we had with our, our business partners. Like, what, is, what answers do you want to get from this dashboard? Well, we want to know, you know how many, we want to know the, the basics. They always say, well, what are the basics? Well, we want to know download sessions, you know, sessions per user, session length. These are all, you know, hours upon hours of conversation, planning, whiteboarding, um, brainstorming, and then uh, we all come to an agreement about what we want displayed, uh, and then it gets displayed. And the, the key thing here is that this saves us so much time, because again, people are not tapping us on the shoulder anymore. 
uh, they can answer their own question. Doug, do you have anything else to add here? No, I, I think once again, this is kind of some of the turnstile reporting, and it's not to say this goes away completely. Um, you still need these, the, the basics, right, the table stakes. Um, in my mind, it's just having a gym go out and get this information for somebody, just it doesn't make any sense. And so we've just, we shut it down. Oh, and by the way, you know, guess how long this took me to create with our standardized dash, our, our standardized um, look and feel documents and our standardized back end processes? One day. If, right. I mean, that, that was the power of it, too, is because we had put a lot of the, the work up front, right, the infrastructure, uh, the documentation, now it was boom, boom, boom. We were able to knock this stuff out in no time. Because we knew where the data was, we knew what metrics we needed to pull, we knew the look and feel, and so literally I just took my standardized template, copied and pasted it, and plugged in, uh, plugged in I replaced the metrics of the template with the, the, the metrics of the app and did some basic formatting and it all comes together. And Oh, and also, by the way, um, if you all have graphic design teams, reach out to them and ask them to make these cool little icons and stuff. It makes all the difference, right? I mean, like, without the icons, it would look kind of blah. <laughs> it's not, yeah. And again, I'm the Viz guy. Um, so the uh, this second uh, dashboard I want to show you, and oh, this is, a, this, this is an example, all of these are examples of internal self-service. They're not necessarily digital, pure, there's insights in these, but I wouldn't say that they're like pure like insights, and insights are kind of telling the story. I love telling a great story. But this, all these dashboards we're seeing are examples of internal self-service, right? So this is another example. Uh, this is a little more complex than the last one. Uh, this is actually using the power of Splunk. Um, it's using a, a very complicated Splunk search created by one of our data, one of our data engineers. Um, you know, a couple years ago, our business partners wanted to start figuring out uh, what people did after they clicked our emails. Because we had a lot of operational emails, uh, em operational analytics about our emails, uh, how many clicks, or how many were sent, how many, how many were open, how many clicks. But we didn't really, we were blind to what happened after the click. And so we, uh, impl we implemented some tracking parameters on all the links in our emails, and then we started to uh, understand uh, and, uh, what users were doing after they clicked. And then we started asking the fundamental question, did they go where our call to action intended them to go? And if yes, then success. If not, then fail. Uh, and then, for the first time ever, we applied those successes to uh, call center calls prevented. And for the first time ever, uh, we were able to start revealing the actual true impact that businesses, that our uh, emails were having to our business. So, and again, I want to iterate that, like, if we were still data wrangling in Excel, if we did not have Hadoop, if we did not have Splunk, we, were not, we would not have the time to really go, to, correct, to think of, to rethink what we were doing and, and go after uh, fundamentally new uh, uh, measures of value with the reporting that, that, that we create. This is a, an example of, of kind of another back-end example. This is uh, powered by Hadoop. I know you don't see this, the back-end kind of stuff, but it's awesome. Trust me, it's really awesome. Um, so uh, once upon a time, uh, we, uh, to, in order to get an understanding of uh, what member plan type or what product type our visitors were to our, to our websites were we had to uh, work with cross-functionally with other teams uh, to, to blend data, to join uh, some data sets, and um, it took a long time, like a month or m longer, to actually just come up with that. And the moment that you create that snapshot, it becomes stale. It beca starts to decay. Um, it didn't continually refresh. And then, Weren't you doing this on a quarterly basis? Yes. Yeah. That, that, so three months, technically. So, I mean, the time for somebody to go off and pull all that information and then to actually put it out and for somebody to actually see something like this was just, I mean, as Jim has indicated, the data decay that was there, you really couldn't take much action on it at all. I mean, that was really the big factor in my mind. And then along comes Doug and implements Hadoop and Splunk, or really a team effort. I'm putting a lot of pressure on Doug. It was a team. 
And uh, we implemented Hadoop, and now uh, we have the ability, after working with IT to uh, find the tables of data that we need to work with, uh, we actually now have the ability to track, uh, track this information continually. And so we can report on it continually. And we've linked out different sources, too. So I mean, that's, that's a huge win for our, for our group, because now these folks are able to not see this in a quarterly basis, they're seeing it daily. And I saved the best for last, and this is another demo, because it's just amazing, it's, it's fabulous. Uh, it, it, uh, this, what you're not seeing on the back end is that, uh, Doug, I think this is taking like four different tables of data in, in Hadoop and welding them together. So you're seeing you know, a, a, a really complicated data join here happening in, in, in Hadoop. Uh, and what I'm about to demo here is how all that complicated information comes together in this beautiful, beautiful format. So uh, working with the guy who is, who is an, in task with uh, actually kind of uh, coming up with this, this problem, uh, he, he uh, figured out which tables he needed to join all, uh, this information in, into, uh, and then he put it into a Tableau uh, presentation, and it was very, very complicated and very, very hairy. And when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, how are we going to like make this simple? Because this is just too much information being thrown at people at, one, at, at once. It's just, I said, well, your business partner, and the, oh, by the way, their business partner wanted to know, their business partners wanted to know any one of these campaigns, almost a thousand campaigns in, at any time. They just want to check on them. So like, how do you create that? And then Tableau gives us the ability through the wildcard search filter um, to, to solve that. And so you can actually, right now, there's a, there's a, a worksheet down here hiding. But um, let's say that you want to check on your medicine campaigns. So you just type in here, medicine. And then boom, there are all your medicine campaigns that uh, display beautifully down there. You can see performance across, span, across time. You have the ability, using parameters, again, I wish I could get into the back end of this stuff and show you the awesome Tableau wizardry that I pulled off. That'll be, that'll be next year, or web session or whatever, right, there you go, Andy? Andy. <laughs> but you have the ability to change, to toggle between different, uh, different metrics. And this is, again, using a parameter. And you can also change your time, and this is also used as a parameter. And so, uh, you know, you're, the, the user can ask different questions, answer different questions um, through toggling through these, these different things. And the, the filter is applied universally. And so now, if you, after you get done seeing how your, your uh, dashboard, or how your uh, campaigns performed, you can go over here to the demographics area, and now you can start seeing some demographic details of your campaigns. You can see where people visited these medicine, medicine campaigns from. Uh, you can see their, their gender breakdown, their member plan type breakdown. This is all a beautiful harmony of Hadoop and, and Tableau coming together to do something really complicated, and it would take us an immense amount of time to pull together, and it would probably be stale and, and would decay the moment we published it. But now this is going to be continuously refreshing every single month. And the demographics that we add here, there'll be additional ones. As I mentioned earlier, I mean, this is a... Uh, it's a, a marathon, right? It's, it's not a one and done. Um, and even this, the demographics that we put in here, for some of the folks were, oh my gosh, I didn't know that 65% are female. I, we never knew that before. And that, that was the first moment where people started saying, hey, I want some more of this. When, where can I get it? How much more can I get? You know, and, the, and the dollars started coming forward too. The investment into our area started coming forward, which was really- That's very nice. Yeah, that was nice. <laughs> People started believing in us. They were, <laughs> we weren't crazy. We actually saw something, saw an opportunity, and we came together, uh, and we figured out how to, how to get to point A to point B. And that's where Doug, this, at the, this is the end of our presentation. We're getting to the end of the presentation. Yeah. And Doug's going to so take us out here. I, I won't spend too much time on this. I just want to reiterate that it's a horse race, right? There's many iterations that you're going to go through. Your data is going to evolve. Your tools are going to evolve. Uh, you know, whether it be NLP that you start to get into or predictive modeling. Um, all of these things will start to couple in. As I mentioned before earlier, the stitching of all this information is critical in how we uh, you know, really help our customers develop the best experience that they can have. And we have so many problems that we're still working through. So, I mean, we've put, a, put together a really nice presentation here, but there are still things, fundamental things, like how we're not utilizing the Tableau server to its full potential, and we're just now starting to tap into that. And so there's, 
there's a whole other lesson that's not here, you know, in, 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 in how you all may be utilizing Tableau Server better than we are at the moment. But Tableau is like, I don't know, it's, it's a tool that just has this immense complexity and you add another immense, immensely complex tool like Hadoop and Splunk and then it's well, just. In the Hadoop part too, we're actually, I'm pretty sure, um, even though it is healthcare, we're gonna be looking to move to the cloud um, for a lot of our, our, uh, our data needs. Um, and a lot of that is just to be able to spin up, you know, the performance on different areas, spin up different data. We might do, uh, you know, a proof of concept and we need that space. Well, now I don't necessarily need to rely on IT for all of that. We'll be able to spin up a new virtual client and boom, we're done. And so we do have some lessons learned for you all. Um, just three of them. But one of the, one of the, little mantras we have is just start with a question first and work, work backwards. If you do it any other way, you're gonna end up somewhere not where you really, where your business partners really intend. I think a lot of the things that you need to do when you work with your business partners is what are the goals, what are the things that you're trying to drive to in terms of value? Um, that helps you build out the requirements and then those requirements can then go into the data in infrastructure. Once you build out the data infrastructure, you can then build out the prototype, right? Because a lot of times when you paint the glass for folks, that's when they react. They don't typically react with a blank uh, wall. They, they, they need to see something. And so we found that a lot of times when we give them a prototype, that prototype gives them a reaction to go, oh, I, yeah, I guess I didn't think of it that way. And that looks right to me. Okay, now that that's the case, we can follow through on our standards and we can deliver that in a lot more timely fashion as well. And your business partners don't know your capabilities. And you know your capabilities, and there may be capabilities you don't even know yourself. Um, so always start with a question first and work your way backwards. Take time to teach each other. Yeah, the collaboration for us has been tremendous, I would say. Uh, it was one of the things that the team said at the last, end of last year. I said, what, what's one of the things we need to work on as a team together? And the thing that came back was, could we collaborate more? And as I mentioned before, the, us being virtual did make that challenging, but how do I take a gym who's got all this Tableau knowledge and bring it into somebody that's never even done Tableau before? And so me, having that on a weekly basis, we, we did that. We also carved, told people to carve out time. Take two hours out of your Friday and go do, just, just bang against the machine, basically. Because there's no training, because that's what I said to Jim, there's no training that's gonna solve all of your problems, mm -hmm. right? You're gonna have to dig into these things in order for you to actually make something of it. And this is a big one for us because I think it, it really, um, because we were an Excel shop, uh, change is not something that a lot of people like. But I am a change agent. I love change. Um, I, I think just because, and I'm a poli sci major, so that should say so many folks. But um, in terms of IT, I love the evolution, right? But a lot of people don't. And so how do you facilitate? And it's really the persistence of working with folks to say, how do I get you to understand where we're trying to go here? We were trying to educate people that didn't have an iota of experience in SQL or Tableau. And so the collaboration component really was a big part of it. But then they started to see other areas benefit from the work that we were doing. And they said, oh, you know, I, I think I really want to do that too. And the collaboration helped promote their experience as well. And my suggestion for working through a change averse culture, three words, you probably already know them, Tableau their minds. <laughs> create together, create a, a, such a beautiful and informative dashboard that they just have, they just, their mind just melts and like, oh my God, where has this been in my entire life? And, and you know, that's, that's the suggestion. Because like how could they, if it's beautiful and it's informative, it works well, why would they ever want to cling to Excel ever again? Just let it go. Exactly. And that's it. Thank you. So, thank you all so thank much. You. So this presentation was unique. I particularly enjoyed the banter, the bana, and the humor. <laughs> so it's extra round of applause for Doug Thank and Jim for your job. Thank you, guys. Time. Doug's really actually a pretty awesome boss. I, uh, he, I paid him to, to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have time for, we have 15 minutes for questions. Uh, please raise your hands, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be happy to field those questions for Doug and Jim. OK. Hi, uh, for your mobile.
Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, how do you uh, pull the mobile app data for your dashboard? Do you like from the app store? Do you have like a data connector? Or uh, so we've connected to the app store off of the APIs that are there for Google. Um, we've also um, our web client today does have an SDK that we've put on every single mobile app, and so that's how we capture the data. Um, we've looked at other vendors too. Um, you might be experienced with the healthcare industry is kind of tough to bring on technology vendors, but we kind of we've had a core metrics as our product today, and so they've they have an SDK for us to do that. So that's how we've worked it out. Hey Doug, um, this is Brian Minicello. We haven't met in person, but oh hey Brian, uh, hey. Um, so when you move to Hadoop, oh sorry, when you move to Hadoop, um, are you using you know millions and millions of records in a single dashboard, or are you aggregating it up? And so what's the the speed, um, the interaction speed with the dashboard? So um, it's there's three different levels of layers that we're creating. That's how we built out um, the infrastructure. Um, the first layer is the lowest of layers, right? So that's uh, really member transaction layer. Um, and then we've, we've basically flipped that up because I don't care what product you use. Tableau, is not, Tableau, any of these products are not going to consume, you know, millions upon millions upon millions of rows. Um, so that's, that's how we've been able to manage it thus far. Um, I think the other thing, too, that we've been able to do is we're starting to create more segmentation. So like in the, in the web environments, we're creating categorization against all the pages. So now I can start to take data that comes from, let's say, visitor traffic and these types of segments of people, and then bridge that over into these are the categories of areas that they go into. And so by spinning that up, then I can drive back down to, hey, what was the problem that they were trying to solve for? We also use a custom SQL query to eliminate anything that we don't really need to utilize in the data set. Hello. Over here. Hello. Well, thanks for a great presentation. I really enjoyed it. Well, thank uh, you. The, the question I have is more, more strategically across your business. You focus very much on the, the digital aspect and how it impacts patients. I'm curious if this also has had any impact on the way you have conversations with your provider partners or with your pharma clients as you're, as you're thinking about contracts that's, and performance and things like that, and how's that impacted that side of your business as well? That's a great question. In fact, actually, um, we've now started to co-collaborate on those things because provider hadn't really thought of us much la over the last two years. Um, and then I've had some conversations with the provider director of analytics, and we're starting to say, well, geez, you know, some of those things that you're feeding over in the provider section um, could be fed over to here and vice versa. Clinical's the same way. We really were disconnected, and now I'm starting to go to clinical and saying, hey, you know, if it's a chronic condition, we need to know how much activity we need to spur in content for the member on the website. How do we, we've got to have that population. The Humana Census is what I call it, basically. We need to understand the Humana Census so we can connect that data back into the website and understand what it is that they have an affinity for, basically. And the example I have is uh, the member plan type breakdown. Uh, that was uh, actually made for the PDP segment. Uh, and they wanted to know uh, the behavior of their, uh, of their PDP members on, on the enterprise. And so we created that, that dashboard to help them understand um, how PDP members are behaving in, in the digital enterprise. Cool. Really enjoyed it a lot, guys. That was great. It was one of the best Thank sessions you. I've seen so far. Um, you talked about Hadoop and blending multiple data sets coming from different sources uh, to be able to, to bring into one uh, one view. Uh, inevitably, we're tasked with many different metrics coming from multiple different sources. Um, I get how you could use some type of a common date field to be able to have some generalization, but inevitably the metrics, they're aggregated differently. It's an apples to orange comparison in terms of counts or what have you. Mm -hmm. How have you overcome that? Because it looked like you were bringing in stuff that was coming from different places mm -hmm. into one view as opposed to, I've got 16 different mini views sitting there because each metric can't really compared, be compared against the other one into one view. How do you get around that? So how do you do it, right? How do you make all those connections? But so at the center of it, we have the member. And so that member is a, a, has an ID. And that ID then connects out into other sources. So I know as an example, uh, our voice of customer has, has, when they fill out the survey, I have that connectivity. Or if they matriculate through a claims area or a phone center, I have that ID. So there is a consistent manner that's there. Um, how do you do it? Like how do you literally do it? Um, I would say uh, 
I sat down with the IT teams and told them exactly how I wanted the construction to happen, basically. Um, I put together the stories of the building of the foundation. So if you think about it, it's, it's kind of a three-year type of thing. It's how I at least think about it. But um, the first year was getting all the web data in a format that we could start to consume. The second year is then starting to, to cap in all these different components and stitching that information together, basically. And I'm not the only one in Humana that's doing that, too. I work closely with some of the other analytic leaders to, to make those connections, basically. So, so I think the other part about this is if you're in an organization where you guys are not really connected, um, I guess maybe some learnings is that we have been co-collaborating conversations. We meet on a, a every week basis, basically, to start having these conversations about, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, well, if you're doing that, maybe I can connect in with you. Instead of me having to repave the highway, basically, is what I say to them. Hi. Um, so as you guys transition from your Excel reports to the Tableau, um, eliminating all of that, how did you deal with kind of the fear from the analysts and the people that were pre preparing those Excel reports before, moving from <laughs> something that was what they could control, what other people were seeing versus Tableau, where it was automatically refreshed? You want to take it? or Yeah. So, because I, I Cause there's the analyst view and there's probably my view, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, I encountered a lot of people that had that kind of resistance and that kind of fear. Um, and it really just boiled down to those workshops again. And not, wor and not a workshop, but just like one-on-one -on -one meetings. Like, hey, you need help, under help understanding um, how this stuff works. Let's set up, some, let's set up an hour of time uh, and, and work through the, these issues that you're encountering. And then showing them um, how Tableau works. Um, I, I mean, we have we, I'm more times than I can count. Uh, I've had a meeting to teach people how to use Tableau uh, and just kind of eliminate that anxiety of something new, uh, something unfamiliar, and uh, being a good, uh, finding someone on your team that's a really good educator and latching onto them and, and saying, you know, can you help me create some educational material to help ease this transition for our, our, our team? Or so uh, I'll take it from, because I want to add to that. Um, I took it from the manager perspective, which is we created a project plan for the whole team and basically said that I'm expecting these particular milestones to be hit. And if you don't hit them, I want to understand why. So and if, you, if the dog ate your homework, okay, fine. But let me understand where you are at least. So if, if you didn't you know, make the whole dashboard, show me that you've at least come this far, okay? And, and then I can understand. I mean, I, I, we, I understood that not everyone had the... Um, skill set yet, right, the capability. But by putting a project plan together for everyone to get there, it, it, it basically forced people, at least on the analyst side, to say, I, I, you know, I got to do this. I don't have a choice. This is some of the, an example. I put this in the annex of this presentation. Um, but this is an example of, the, of uh, some of the education material that we, we created. This, uh, the, the functionality, the, the parameter, um, time parameter functionality that we've created with our, our visualizations. Um, we have teams, we have people on our team now who had no idea how this worked, what a parameter was. They read this field guide and then uh, figured it out. Any other questions? Hi. Hello. Um, so when you take your dashboard to a business partner, and they'd be like, oh, this is great. But do they ask you, like, oh, can you add this, this, and this, like certain filters so they can drill down more? And what point do you say, like, do you stop? Because there's so much <laughs> data great... in healthcare that we have that we could drill down so much, but it comes to a point where it's too much. So how do you handle that when you're talking to your business partner? And Go back to the goals of what they're trying to get for the value. So if they're going data crazy or creating all kinds of scope creep on you, just I, sometimes I, I say to Jim, no. You know, uh, it sounds easy, but I know it's hard, especially in an analyst role. But really going back to them and saying, so help me understand where are your goals at? How does this tie back to the value that you're trying to drive within those goals? And then, you know, and then I understand. I think the other thing is don't be afraid to give them access, though, too. Oh, you want to go data crazy? Be my guest, you know? Um, I, that's how I there, there are two things that come to my mind. Um, one is... Uh, 
there are other ways that they can pull that data. For example, we use Core Metrics, and Core Metrics has their own UI. And so if they want to go after all these crazy things, I just teach them how to use the Core Metrics UI instead of relying on us to go out and query it and make a Splunk search or make a ta dashboard out of it. If you want to go like explore, um, there's a really great tool. It's I mean, it's not most, it's not very intuitive, in my opinion. Um, I would much rather create a dashboard, but giving them that access and that training to learn how to go explore themselves, that, that was the solution to that. And I'll add one more just to, to your point, but it's crawl, walk, run, right? So frame it up for them to say, listen, crawl, walk, run, where, you know, where do you want to go to? If, if you're saying that that's important for your business, okay, I can get you X, that'll get you crawl. Walk is six months down the road. Let's, let's not get to walk just yet. Let's make sure that we have that, you know, your time frame is, is fair because a lot of times Jim can attest to this. Jim will say, okay, I'm going to do that, you know, and I'm like, no, 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 we can't do that. We've got to take a step back and prioritize and compartmentalize the effort. It's learning how to say no eloquently and uh, not pretentiously. Be like, I'm not doing that, you know, that's, you don't want to ever do that. But like just being like, well, what exactly are you trying to get at with this metric? Oh, okay, well, I think that this other metric also accomplishes that goal, yeah. too. You don't need to see seven different things of the same thing. You know, just one is probably all you need. Uh, and just kind of leading them to another, another solution. Because, again, going back to start with the question first and work backwards, um, if you don't do that, then you end up, they end up creating all these, like, we, I, they, it's like a candy shop. They're like, I want this, I want that, I want this and that, and that, and I'm like, ah. But, um, but starting with that question first gives you the ability to kind of frame it up for them. You're like, okay, well, we're going to show you sessions, we're going to show you app, app per sessions, we're going to show you time spent, and, and that's going to give you a nice snapshot of like how your app is performing or whatever. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. okay. One last question. Try to make it a good one since I'm the last one. Uh, so you chose Hadoop and Splunk. Was there, were there any other software or any other components that you thought about during that process or anything you tried that maybe didn't work or anything like that? Um, I mean, I've used Red Redshift in a past life, uh, AWS, um, options that are there. We, we, we kind of, in some ways, because I don't own the back end stack, I do have to work with IT to kind of see what they have available. Um, so in that particular instance, we had just gone with Cloudera. Uh, you know, we, we didn't pressure test other things. Now, as we're moving to AWS, that, that could offer us some optionality, you know, in my mind as well. Um, but today, at least, we didn't. I have in other areas done proof of concepts around other options. We just didn't do it here. Awesome. So again, a huge applause for thank Doug you and Jim. Y'all are a great audience. Thank, thank you very much for coming. And, and so a special word of congratulations to Jim, who was recently married, right? Actually, <laughs> Got a ring went, on it. He went away as we were collaborating on the presentation, and then actually <laughs> came back. And of course, did an awesome job delivering it today. So congratulations. Thank you, Andy. Thank you very thank much, you guys, for your attendance. We really appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much.